Welcome back to Harbour Box. Today for something different, we'll be going over some benchmark data. Quite a bit of it in fact. This time we're checking out Hitman 2 and what better way to evaluate this new title than throw 57 graphics cards at it. I guess 60 as a more round number probably would have sounded better now that I think about it. Hmm. Maybe we can aim for 60 next time. As long as it's not an origin title with that five hardware limit change thing uh, per account within 24 hours. I think we can make it happen. Anyway, we still have a truckload of results to go over, but before we do, uh, just a few quick notes about the game benchmark pass, and then of course, the test system hardware configuration. I have to admit, I've never really played any of the Hitman titles. Uh, sadly, I just don't have that much time to play games, and when I do, it always seems to be multiplayer titles with mates. So... Yeah, not a lot of time invested in single player titles. That being the case, I might actually get to play the 2018 version of Hitman 2 as it does support multiplayer. I know nothing about the new multiplayer mode as I'm yet to actually try it out, but a quick Google search tells me that it is a cooperative multiplayer mode and it's been titled Sniper Assassin. And in this mode, players are tasked with eliminating targets using a sniper rifle within a set time limit. So sounds like it could be quite a bit of fun. Now, like Hitman, Hitman 2 still uses the Glacier game engine, though with some graphical improvements, namely to the lighting and reflections. That said, right now there is no DirectX 12 support, which is extremely odd given that the previous version supported this API. Hitman was released in 2016. At the time, the DirectX 12 performance was pretty janky and therefore we stuck to DX11. However, it eventually got ironed out and it became our preferred API for testing. I recently demonstrated performance gains for Vega 64 using DirectX 12 with a Core i7 8700K, and you can expect even stronger gains with a lower end CPU. So, the missing DX12 support in Hitman 2 is very unexpected, and right now I'm unsure as to whether or not support will be added via a patch or if it's been scrapped altogether. Along with the missing API, the graphical options for Hitman 2 are extremely limited when compared to the previous version. For example, it's no longer possible to select the anti-aliasing method you'd like to use. Instead, you're forced to use SMAA, which I guess is fine as we used to test with SMAA anyway. For testing, I'm using the Miami mission titled The Finish Line, and my save game location starts us off at the NPC Heavy Grandstand. For the test, I walk the entire length of the grandstand, then exit to the right, and then take another right, and then the test finishes basically there. It's a 60 second test in total, and the results you're about to see are all based on an average of three runs. Testing takes place at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K using the ultra quality preset. Then as a bonus, we have 18 older graphics cards, very old graphics cards, along with a few newer models tested at 1080p using the medium quality settings. For this benchmark, I'm using my Core i7-8700K GPU test rig, which is built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X, and packs 16GB of Vengeance DDR4-3400 memory. For the GeForce GPUs, the 416.94 driver has been used, and for the Radeon GPUs, the Adrenaline 18.11.1 driver. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything. Let's get into the results. First off, let's look at the older Radeon 300 and GeForce 900 series graphics cards, starting with the 1080p data. As you can see, Hitman 2 is very taxing with the ultra quality settings enabled, and for 60 FPS on average, you will require either a Radeon R9 390 or GeForce GTX 970 graphics card. The GTX 970 hangs in there very well with the R9 390 though, the GTX 960 does get a bit trashed by the R9 380. We also see the Fury X doing surprisingly well, as it wasn't that far behind the GTX 980 Ti. Upping the resolution to 1440p, and here we find it much more difficult to hit 60 FPS on average. In fact, only the GTX 980 Ti and Titan X achieve the desired 60 FPS. The game was playable on the GTX 970, R9 390, and anything above those two, but Probably not ideal frame rates for the multiplayer portion of the game. Unsurprisingly, given what we saw at 1440p, the 4K resolution is completely off the table for these previous generation GPUs, unless you enjoy that cinematic console-like 30fps experience. Actually, scrap that. It's no longer console-like. Let's go with ray tracing-like from now on. Now for the current generation GPUs, and I am loosely defining current generation here, as technically Pascal is a previous generation part now, at least the GTX 1080 and 1080Ti. Anyway, here we see for an average of 60 FPS you need only the RX 570 or 3GB GTX 1060. Both did extremely well in our test at 1080p. 
Beyond the RX 580, the new RX 590, and the 6 GB GTX 1060, you're looking at frame rates mostly above 100 FPS. Now jumping up to 1440p, here I've dropped any graphics cards that struggled to deliver just over 20 FPS on average. You could also ignore the GTX 1050 Ti, RX 560 and GTX 1050 as those graphics cards didn't really provide playable performance. For 60 FPS on average, you'll require a GTX 1070 or Vega 56 graphics card. That said, the 6GB GTX 1060 RX 580-590 were also able to deliver playable performance. Then at the top end, we're still quite heavily CPU bound, and this is why the RX 2080 Ti is barely any faster than the 2080, and not much faster than the GTX 1080 Ti. Then finally at 4K, the RTX 2080 Ti comes into its own, as it often does, and provides an unrivaled experience. We do rip on the RTX series quite a lot because of poor pricing, poor DXR performance so far, and a few other issues that have popped up since release, such as cards dying and stuff like that. But all that mess aside, the 2080 Ti really is an impressive product when looking purely at 4K gaming performance. Never dipping below 60 FPS with an average of 85 FPS really is incredible. It probably doesn't justify the price tag, at least for most, but it is incredible all the same. Still, the GTX 1080 Ti did break the 60 FPS barrier at 4K, and you could even make do with Vega 64. Here's all the 1080p data for the current and previous generation GPUs, and apologies to mobile users. I'll create a stretched out version of this graph and I'll supply it for free on our Patreon page if you're interested. I won't go over all the data again, you can make your own comparisons here. I'll just note that when using the ultra quality settings at 1080p, we were seeing up to three and a half gigabytes of VRAM allocated on the GPUs with eight gigabytes or more memory. So ideally you will want a four gigabyte VRAM buffer for playing at 1080p using these quality settings. Then at 1440p, we saw up to 3.8 gigabytes of VRAM allocated. So again, you want at least a four gigabyte VRAM buffer for this resolution. Slightly less GPUs shown here as the lower end models can't handle the 1440p resolution. Then at 4K we have just 16 survivors, though half a dozen of them didn't really survive that well and are probably unusable here. For gaming at 4K, VRAM usage is almost irrelevant as any GPU powerful enough and will have enough memory. That said, we saw memory allocation hit four and a half gigabytes. So again, given that all GPUs capable of gaming at this resolution have at least eight gigabytes, this requirement isn't really an issue. Then finally, we have the 1080p medium quality results with SSAO or screen space ambient occlusion disabled. This allowed the RX 570, GTX 970, R9 390, and R9 290 to all pump out well over 60 FPS. For around 40 FPS on average, something like the GTX 950 will do, and that actually matched the older flagship GTX 680. You'll notice older Radeon GPUs like the HD 7950 do much better than the GTX 680. In fact, the 7970 smashed the GTX 680 by a whopping 20% margin. I can already hear the AMD fans gargling their fine wine in the comment section below. Other popular old bangers, take the GTX 750 Ti for example, uh, that was also less impressive than the AMD equivalent, rendering just 32 FPS on average. Anyway, plenty of old graphics cards to check out, so feel free to pause the video here and take it all in. Well, there you have it. In terms of performance, Hitman 2 is very similar to the 2016 version. Apart from a few minor graphical upgrades that I mentioned earlier, uh, the games are very alike. For such a CPU intensive game, and I will be providing some CPU benchmark results down the track, it's very surprising to see the low level API, DirectX 12, uh, missing. And again, not sure if support will be patched in or if developer IO Interactive just thought it was too much work to implement. Though that would seem quite odd given I thought they got it to a pretty good place with the 2016 version. Uh, surely they could have just continued on from where they were at. The lack of tweakable visual quality settings is also massively disappointing for a PC version, and it does make it difficult for those with older graphics cards to optimize their setup. Thankfully, dropping down to the medium quality settings and disabling SSAO did improve performance by around 30 to 40%, but still, with more quality settings, it would be easier to improve our performance without sacrificing visual quality as much. Speaking of which, Tim will be providing an optimization video for this title in a few days, though I have to imagine 
that will be a pretty short video. As I just mentioned, at some point in the future I'll also get a Hitman 2 CPU benchmark done. I'm still working on the CPU benchmark for Battlefield 5 using the multiplayer portion of the game, and that is taking a huge amount of time to get done, so I'll have that up on the channel sometime in the future. I'm not quite sure when, but yeah, I'm working on getting that one out as soon as I can. So to quickly recap, for those of you wanting to play Hitman 2 at 60fps and all of its glory at 1080p, you need nothing more than the R9 390, GTX 970, RX 570, or 3GB GTX 1060, and obviously anything higher up than those cards in the food chain will be perfectly fine. Then at 1440p, the GTX 1070 or Vega 56 will be required, and again, anything faster than them obviously will work just fine. Then as usual, 4K really is GTX 1080 Ti territory, or of course anything uh, better like the RTX 2080 Ti. Finally, if you're willing to play with the medium quality settings at 1080p, then there is a slew of older options to choose from. And that is going to do it from me on this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it took quite a few days to put together, actually probably twice as long as I'd normally invest in one of these videos. So yeah, the game came out, I think it was last Tuesday. I've been doing benchmarking on and off since then. Anyway, point is a lot of hours was put in to the creation of this video. So I hope you guys appreciate it. The video itself, I don't expect to generate too much attention. Hitman 2 is probably not a hugely popular title, so the views on this one aren't going to be great. I knew that going into it, but I also knew there was quite a few Harbour Unbox fans that really wanted to see this benchmark video made. So yeah, if that is the case, then please assassinate the like button. Or do I want you to assassinate the dislike button? I don't know why I always go off script and try to be funny and make something up because it always backfires and then I confuse myself. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I guess you can subscribe for more content just like this. Uh, and yeah, if you again, if you appreciate the work we do and all the hours we put into this content, because Tim and I always put in a huge amount of time to the content we make. So if you appreciate that, you can support us directly on Patreon. And there are uh, quite a few nice perks if you will like the channel, because you can get access to our exclusive Discord chat, where you can request content, which a lot of you seem to do in the Discord chat. We greatly appreciate all your ideas. Uh, and you also get access to our monthly live streams. We will be doing two of those next week. So a good time to sign up for Patreon, because you can get in there and ask questions live, have them answered by Tim and myself. We get together and do that. And yeah, I think that's about all I need to say on this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.